Day two of the NFL draft is in the books, and the Browns finally went on the clock. They made a pick not at number 49. Mary Kay, they moved up. They selected Greedy Williams, the cornerback out of LSU. Well, there was a run on cornerbacks, and they had to get a good one right away. So they had to jump up and get him. They moved up three spots with the Colts, giving up 144 in the fifth round, where they had three picks, so they had some to give. They end up with Greedy Williams. He should start opposite Denzel Ward. He's considered a lockdown cornerback, and he also has good ball skills. Yeah, one of the things that kind of stood out is his ability to cover. That's what they loved in Denzel Ward. That's what they love in Greedy Williams. Now, Scott, in the third round, they go with a linebacker from BYU, Sione Talky Talky. Yes, they did. And I think when uh, when we were looking at possibilities for the draft, people considered a, a linebacker as, a, as maybe a top priority, especially because you lose Jamie Collins, you have Jannard Avery coming in, everybody kind of expecting him to be the strong outside linebacker. But Elliot Wolf tonight kind of shed some light on what St Steve Wilkes looks for in a linebacker. And he said you need three people who can run, three people who can cover, and three people who can play physical. And I think with Taki Taki, you're getting somebody who flies all over the field and who hits very hard. He's very aggressive. So it's not necessarily they're looking for the traditional Sam linebacker or the Sam or the Mike linebacker. They're kind of looking for guys who can do different things, be a little versatile. And, and that seems like somebody they got tonight. And similar to a guy they drafted last year in Jannard Avery, kind of you're seeing what they really look for, like you said, in linebackers in those two picks. Now, on Saturday, it's day three. That's rounds four through seven. The Browns are down a fifth-round pick now. They still have two of those. They have five total picks as of right now on Saturday. Uh, I still think this team is going to take a receiver at some point, somebody who's fast, maybe smaller, somebody that can help on special teams and return. I know Terry McLaurin was a guy that I was eyeballing, but he went off the board uh, today. What are you guys expecting tomorrow? You know, they can kind of go anywhere now. I think they filled some holes today. They really actually, they took the best available players, but they needed a cornerback. They needed a linebacker. Now I think they're kind of free to really just follow that board and go with the best available player. You can see, you'll see a backup, maybe offensive lineman somewhere along the line. You could see a receiver, a running back, a safety. They really can kind of go anywhere. Scott? You know, I'm going to go with quarterback. I think uh, <laughs> we, we've heard a lot about how they this front office has come from Green Bay and the philosophy there was you always draft a quarterback. When Dorsey was in Kansas City, he twice drafted quarterbacks in the fifth round, one of which was Kevin Hogan. Uh, so I think the fifth round with multiple picks, maybe that's a place to take someone. I know you and I have both written about Gardner Minshew as a, uh, as a possibility because of his air raid background. So I think we're probably going to see a quarterback. It, it just kind of makes sense to bring somebody in that they can maybe develop for the future. All right, so one day left in the draft. And, of course, we will cover it all for you on Saturday at cleveland.com slash browns.